And welcome to a special episode of Digital Marketing Today this week on a Wednesday. We're here with Lila Smith. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Digital Marketing Today. Lila Smith. Hi. I am so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. I keep running into you places and yeah. this is intentional. Yes. We meant to meet here today and Absolutely. share things with you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so for those people who are going to be watching that have been under a rock for the past few years and don't know who you are already, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you share with our audience just a little bit of background. Uh, you have a very diverse background, and then we'll kind of uh, get into where you are now and kind of why we're having this conversation Yeah, today. sure. Um, I'm a weird girl. I'm from New York, and I moved to Dallas because I really wanted to be with the people here. I wanted to be around big thinkers who, when I said things like, I am think I'm going to save the world through intentional communication, that the response was a big thought, a big response, a big enthusiasm, a big, like, that sounds great, how can I help, I'm with you, intentional communication, what is that? Mm -hmm. Where in New York, I was getting responses like, okay, but what are you going to do for a job? And I was like, a job? Didn't you hear me? I'm going to save the world. <laughs> I'm going to be a superhero. <laughs> right. And so I, I moved here uh, about a year ago, I think it's a year ago, I think it's a year ago today. Really? Well, happy birthday. I thank you. It's my Dallas anniversary, my right. Dallas anniversary. And before that, you know, being in New York my whole life and being this kind of a person, it kind of felt obvious that I would be an actress. Like, it seems like, of course, she's an actress, right? Like, if I tell you that that's what I did for mm -hmm. 10 years, mm -hmm. okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But a lot of actors, as their day job, would wait tables or be a bartender because the schedule is flexible. Mm -hmm. But I created kind of a workaround and built myself a mainstream career in marketing and e-commerce and customer-facing branded communication. The last full-time job job that I had while I was also performing was as director of e-commerce for a footwear company in New York City. So I'm that girl who has a theater background but also an e-commerce background, which positions me to share things with this audience for digital marketing because I know what it is, I know what's necessary, I know what you're using it for, I know the tools, the platforms, the language, and all of that. But at the same time, I also come from a background that has our own language. In theater, we have tools that I studied and practiced for 20 years mm -hmm. just to be able to connect with other people on stage and with the other person on, on stage with me, and then also out to the audience. So I had that interpersonal, connective, relationship building mm -hmm material, all the tools that help somebody know you mm -hmm. and understand who you are and what you're trying to make them feel, and then all the tools that tell a story to people who are going to carry that story with them out of the theater once they've seen your show and tell that story to other people, and that's just branding and marketing. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting because, um, you know, it, it is very interpersonal, and a lot of times people do not realize that those skills are necessary even on digital platforms kind oh, of yeah. kind of transferring that type of interpersonal communication skills and really incorporating that into the communications that you're having when you can't even, when you can't see someone right well right? especially when you can't see someone right how much more intentional should you be when someone can't even see the light in your face when you're excited about something mm -hmm. how do they know that you're genuine that you're authentically excited about something? How do they know that they should trust your words, that this thing is the best? So authentic, connective, personal communication mm -hmm. is more important now than ever, and especially in a digital landscape, mm -hmm. because we have disconnected so much from, hey, Mark, where do, where do you like to get pizza? Mm -hmm. And then you tell me, and then I go and eat there immediately. Yeah. That's the highest rate of conversion of any kind of marketing you have. Absolutely. When I'm hungry, right now, mm -hmm. and I ask the person next to me who I trust what their opinion is, mm -hmm. they tell me, they have vouched for it, so therefore I trust it, and then I go and I convert into a buyer for that brand. Mm -hmm. That is the way things used to be. And so we've moved farther and farther away from that interpersonal moment, and now we need tools like Rocket Fuel to do moment scoring and tell us 
when is the person hungry? Mm -hmm. So that I know to show them that pizza ad then. Mm -hmm. But what does the pizza ad do? Is it showing me, um, Mark likes this, you know, on Facebook. Is it showing me, you know, any kind of social proof? Is it showing me a, a very compelling picture? Mm -hmm. Or is it saying New York style pizza? And I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. You know, right. I'm a New Yorker. Right. <laughs> I'm not a good example of that, actually. Right. But right. it's in those moments that used to be so compelling and so converting mm -hmm. that now are distant and right. now are cold and now are so a polished brand that we have forgotten that the most highly converting moment of inspiration and influence is from a person mm -hmm. to a person. We trust people a lot more than we trust advertisements. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that we, you know, we focus on video-centric communication yeah. as well, because at least with, at least with a piece of video content, you can kind of communicate those facial expressions, passion, you know, all of those other things. So mm -hmm. even though it may still be an ad, at least it has some of that, you know, kind of personal element to it. Yeah, so, yeah. those personal elements, the things that I see when, when I talk about a light in your face mm -hmm. when you believe something, those are data points mm -hmm. that are interpersonal, that are inside, our internal computer in our head is synthesizing really quickly. Right. So I observe <clears throat> body language, I observe facial expressions. Those are results on the surface. Mm -hmm. What I do with my method, which is called Say Things Better, what I do with the Say Things Better method is I attach people and their message to the values that are part of them inherently that they cannot shake. I give them some stakes to keep them accountable to expressing those values, but getting clear on what those are to begin with, that's what makes facial expressions happen. Not because you say, I'm going to do this with my face, because then you look crazy. Right. You know? Right. Oh, if I just open my eyes really wide, I look excited. Right. I'm like, no, I look like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens if I say, decide to excite your audience? Mm -hmm. You know what it means as a speaker to mm -hmm. excite the person that you're with. Sure. And what if I say to connect? Mm -hmm. And then your voice just changes because you know what it is for you to connect. And if I say, um, alternative, like the opposite of that, if I say to dismiss with your communication, then, it, you know, uh, go buy pizza at this place. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes that. But when I say go buy pizza at this place, mm -hmm. not because I've done something with my face, mm -hmm. but because I decided to convince, mm -hmm. to reassure, to excite, to ignite, whatever those verbs are that are part of your values mm -hmm. are natural to you anyway. And that's part of the methodology and that's what connects people. It's so simple, isn't it? Yeah. Just decide how you want to make someone feel. Yeah. But I mean, you have the, to the, decide it first. Yeah, the flip side of that is is knowing what those values are in your in your target right. audience. Right. Views. <laughs> yeah. So I help people yeah. with that and yeah. it is a lot of discussion. Right. People are shocked always at how it takes a, almost a full day mm -hmm. to distill into a set of three verbs. Mm -hmm. My verbs for say things better and for myself are to affirm, to connect, and to empower. Mm -hmm. So if I were to bring in a social media team to help me scale out the messaging with say things better, they would be tasked with finding images and quotes of mine mm -hmm. and video clips, whatever it is that would affirm connect with and empower my audience mm -hmm. and those are the three checkpoints that right. is the beginning middle and end of the direction that I would give somebody mm -hmm. except if they really didn't understand what that meant then it would be a, a pretty simple communication sure. event just to clarify things with them yeah but if you start with something that's very simple and you you pick something that people understand people know if there's a picture of me and I'm facing away from the camera looking down Maybe it's, con maybe it's connective, you know, I'm here in this moment where I feel nervous and I feel um, like upset or something. So maybe it's connective, but is it also affirmative? Not really. Mm -hmm. And is it also empowering? Maybe if you're empowered by other people feeling unempowered, but then like, who are you? <laughs> you right, know? Right, yeah. So uh, those would be the tools that I would use to mm -hmm. explain my brand to my communication accelerators. Right. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I knew that about you already, but I'm glad our audience <laughs> knows that now, too. You know so, a lot of things yeah. about me. I'm right. pretty open. You know, I yeah. talk on LinkedIn, which is my major social media yeah. platform, mm -hmm. about all kinds of things. Yeah. You know, I'm there every single day. Mm -hmm. I've been commenting on LinkedIn since June 1st, 2017. 
actually since the day before that, but mm. June 1st was the day that I started the goal yeah. of just checking in there first before I would go over to Facebook mm -hmm. because I wanted something that was going to be more connective to people who were interested in big ideas. Mm -hmm. And what I was finding on Facebook were a lot of, you know, pictures of meals and other people's children and like, I love other people's children, but I don't have any of my own, mm -hmm. and that's hard for me to see sometimes. You're sure. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a triggering place right. for me, and I try to just keep myself mentally healthy as much sure. as I can. And yeah. so LinkedIn was a place that I felt in 2017, maybe I'll see something that I can talk about that I'm comfortable talking about right now. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable talking about management. I'm talking about messaging. I'm talking about leadership. And that's where I went on before I developed the Say Things Better method. Mm -hmm. What happened was I ended up connecting with all of these people who kept saying to me, you're a great communicator. Can you just help me? Let me show you what I have for my website right now. Can you help me say this but better? Mm -hmm. Can you just help me say things better? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would use those words. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's where the brand name comes from was other people saying to me, you just say things better, girl. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, if you say so. Sure. All right. Um, well, we have to take a little short break. All right. Go but, get your Cheerios. But when we come back, I want to kind of continue that thought and talk about it more from a personal branding stand standpoint, yeah. like how people can kind of use some of those techniques to start developing their personal brand and Perfect. specifically on LinkedIn. So we're going to take a little short break. Before we do, each uh, show, we feature a local artist and a piece of work uh, from that local artist. Today's artist is C.J. Cowden. She's a local Dallas artist, and the piece of artwork behind us is called Stratosphere. And uh, C.J. is represented by our friend David Call at David Call Designs. So the contact information is on the screen. If you have interest in any of the artwork, or you can come by and see a lot of other artwork here at VentureX, uh, please get a hold of David Call or just come by and visit us here. Um, and thanks to C.J. Calvin for this great piece of artwork called Stratosphere. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll see you on the flip side on Digital Marketing Today. Hey there, this is Mark Neese with Sync Lab Media. You know, we've been really fortunate to collaborate with David Call from David Call Designs, and he has curated some really great artwork from three local artists here at VentureX Dallas by the Galleria. And in celebration of that, we are hosting, along with VentureX Dallas by the Galleria and David Call Designs, a great event coming up this next Thursday, July 18th, Trifecta, Art to the Third Power. So we hope to see you here at VentureX Dallas by the Galleria this next Thursday from 5 to 8 p.m., where you can meet all three of the local artists, socialize, network, eat, and drink. The link to the free ticket on Eventbrite is right below in the comments on this post. So we look forward to seeing you then. Stop by, tour the VentureX Dallas by the Galleria location, view some great local art, meet some local artists, and have a great time. We'll see you then. Welcome back to Digital Marketing Today. We're continuing our conversation with Lila Smith, Say Things Better. So right before the break, we were kind of talking about how your 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 own brand kind of developed and really yeah. from like direct input from others, and that's kind of where the inspiration came from. But you know, we were talking a little bit before we actually started recording uh, the show today about how important it is for individuals, whether they're entrepreneurs, business owners themselves, or especially even if they're working for a larger company oh, yeah. and underneath another brand, how to kind of figure out what their own values and personal brand is and really starting to communicate in those ways. So tell us a little bit about how you might work with someone in that position and, and someone with a job? Sure. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was someone with a job, you mm -hmm. know, and 
when it felt like not the right fit for me anymore, I had already built myself a whole audience, a whole community of people who were ready to support me no matter what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Because they understood what I stood for, they understood what I knew, they knew what to go to me for. So I had all this freedom and flexibility to make choices to define my own stakes in life, what I wanted to get for myself. I could have gone to another company. I could have worked for another e-commerce department. I could have gone into just you know marketing roles. I could have tried to work at LinkedIn. I could have done a lot of things. I started Say Things Better because it was the best fit for me, but that doesn't mean that I didn't have the ability to make other choices because people knew who I was mm -hmm. and they knew what they could count on me for. So if you have a personal brand, which is basically, I mean, we used to have a word for it, reputation, right. you know, <laughs> it's really not that different than just what people say about you when you're not in the room, mm -hmm. the things that you are known for. And that's not the things that you think that you should be known for, right? A lot of it is your attitude. Mm -hmm. Recommendations are an example of your personal brand. If you look at the recommendations that former bosses or coworkers have written for you, mm -hmm. and you look for the common thread, what are the things that other people are always calling out about me that are special about their experience of working with me? Mm -hmm. Important to know those things about yourself because they will help you identify what the next right move for you is. You could know yourself and know, actually, I don't want to do this kind of work at all. I'd like to transition into a completely different industry or a totally different role. When you decide that that's what you want, you still have this whole history of things that you've shared, whether you share it online or just intentionally making sure that other people in your circle know things about you that are what you want them to know. So calling out pieces of your toolbox that are part of your overall message, the things that you really care about the most. I always care about connection, mm -hmm. community. People know this about me. So I could have been a community manager at a co-working space. Mm -hmm. I always go out to events. I could have been an events manager. Mm -hmm. It would have been a very easy fit, not a far leap for people to think about me mm -hmm. if I said, I'd like to do this kind of work because they see me already doing it, because I've got coverage of that, because I'm intentionally sharing those parts of me. Mm -hmm. I intentionally share the parts that are the most important to me without deciding what the impact of that is going to be long term so that I have flexibility and, and I'm open. But if somebody already knows what they want to do, you can be even more intentional. You can be the one to say, okay, I'm the video marketing guy. So what do you show? You show that you know video. You show that you know video technology. You show that you can see applications of video marketing where they aren't currently being used. You show that you know video marketing technology and where those applications are where it is being used. And you say, here's what I think is good. Here's what I think is bad. Here's what I could have done if they had hired someone like me. Right. <laughs> and yes. just like providing your opinion, mm -hmm. deciding I have something to say, and then you put that thing out there into the world. And over time, people will know the thing you have to say is this. Yeah, I think it's critical the point you made about kind of knowing what other people see and finding those mm -hmm. commonalities and those threads through that too. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the leadership training that I've been through, one of the one of the common threads through that is just the statement that feedback is a gift. Yes, it is. Right, and so yes. a lot of people don't necessarily look at it that way because feedback isn't always positive. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, feedback you know. isn't always communicated in a way that is right. connective. Mm -hmm. And for those managers or, or people in an audience or, or followers of somebody or internet trolls, I'm talking to you too. Right. <laughs> if you are an internet troll, that is your brand. People mm -hmm. think that you don't know how to connect with your communication. Mm -hmm. So if that's important to you, keep talking like you're talking, but you only provide contrast for people like me to shine. Right. Right? right. Uh, but that kind of feedback, when you get feedback that isn't communicated with love, mm -hmm. It's still your responsibility to listen for any kind of things that are useful if you really care about mission more than you care about ego. Mm -hmm. If you really care about what you want to bring to the world, you listen to what other people are observing, what they're taking out of it, and then if you can quantify that, if you keep getting the same kind of feedback, mm -hmm. you come across as really abrasive, you come across as really egocentric, mm -hmm. then you want to be aware of what you did to make that happen for people like that. Mm -hmm. That's one kind of communication partner. That doesn't mean that that feedback is going to be the same for your communication partner, the person that you're trying to attract with your personal brand. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So 
for let's uh, scenario maybe someone uh, who might be new to LinkedIn, like just trying to explore that platform for the first time. So maybe someone uh, who is in transition and maybe they didn't think that LinkedIn was necessarily important to them before, but now they're realizing that it's hugely important <laughs> yeah. to help them advance or, may, or maybe they're actively seeking a even a better position or maybe mm -hmm. another company to work for what would be some things that you would uh, suggest that they do uh, kind of a strategy maybe that they can employ to start to start kind of that search or that journey well you want to start with an understanding of what you're hoping for so who do you hope looks at your profile who do you hope runs across you on LinkedIn if I can give you anybody in the world to stumble upon you and and I say here I'm gonna actually walk them over to a computer Take them to LinkedIn and show them your profile. What are you hoping that they will know after having been there? I want people to know that I am a communication coach, that I'm a communication consultant doing workshops for small to medium sized businesses, and that I also am now starting to do bigger things for organizations like the Dallas Mavericks and Merck Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. I want them to know that I'm a speaker, and you should know this if you're looking on my profile. I also want people to know that I'm creative and fun. And so I put I like song all, links. Yeah. You no, wouldn't know. I did a terrible no, job. <laughs> I, I want people to know things about me that mm. are not just this is the quality of my work, these are my results. Because mm. the kind of people I want to attract are the ones who want to have fun. I want the people who aren't only looking for the facts and the results, because I have those. Mm. But I want the people who are going to be in a room with me for however long that is, having a great time. Mm -hmm. Fun is one of my driving values. Mm -hmm. So I put on my profile an off-profile section. Mm -hmm. And this is not my advice to you. This is just my saying, like, mm -hmm. this is what I do to attract who I want to attract. If you, what you want to attract are some serious corporate opportunities, your profile is going to look different. You'll want to talk about experience, but you'll want to talk about what it meant to you to have that experience. What did you take out of it? How do you learn? What do you bring to a team? What are some of your favorite working memories? Mm -hmm. Tell a story in that about section on your LinkedIn profile. And don't miss any opportunity to use the space on that profile. Your cover photo, like go top down. Mm -hmm. Go to the, the cover photo on your page. It should show something that is related to what you want people to know about you. Mm -hmm. What you would bring working in their organization or as a consultant or as a coach or whatever you are. Mm -hmm. And then your profile picture, if you have sunglasses on in your picture, take them off. Mm -hmm. If you don't show a profile picture because of privacy settings, like, let it go. We all are going to see it eventually. Right. Change your settings, show your picture, or people won't trust you. They won't believe you're a real person. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to see someone's face. Show your full name, first and last. Exceptions to this are if you are in the military or any kind of public safety, or you're an educator in a public school, you might want some distance. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are exceptions. But as a rule, if you want people finding your profile, they have to see your name. So yeah, you show them your right. full name. Sure. Have a title that says not just teacher, but um, I don't know, like motivational um, teacher of 11 to 15 year olds, teaching them what's exciting about physics or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, say that better. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just an example of. of don't just tell me the thing that you do. Right. Tell me why you do it. Tell me what's exciting to you about what you do. Mm -hmm. And let me see that throughout your whole profile. And you can put some keywords in there that are, you know, if you're looking for another job, you can toggle on a setting that says that you're open to recruiters. Mm -hmm. But you also want recruiters to be able to find your profile because they're searching for you. So if you go on a search, you look for a job and you say, I'm looking for jobs in video marketing. And you, you do this search of video marketing as search term. When you look at jobs, look at the job descriptions. Again, try to highlight the commonalities. Mm -hmm. What are the keywords that they're looking for in the experience that's necessary? And then find those words and tell them in a story on your profile. Mm -hmm. Tell them in stories through content. Tell them in your experience. Use those keywords as you describe what you do so that you can be found so that it's SEO friendly. Mm -hmm.
all awesome advice. Thanks. Yeah. That's just the profile. I know. That's just it, you could go connecting with people. Right. You could go commenting on things. Sure. You could you could use you know like a networking tool what it's yeah. there for. Yeah. You could ask for recommendations, ask for introductions. But just starting with your profile first, mm -hmm. optimizing it so that whoever it is that you ideally want to find your profile, when you have listened to everything that I have to say, yeah. <laughs> and it is already optimized, if they find it, it's a win for them to have found you. Yeah. And I think another, uh, another key thing is to um, actually go out and find content that's related, that you're sure. also a subject matter expert in, and sharing your kind of opinion or take yeah. on those things and having those things populate your feed so that people actually see your comments on it as well, I think is something that's really helpful too. Yeah, the, that's a the, great tip. That a lot of people don't really think about it or or use necessarily. I know that's something that we do. What are the hashtags lot. you follow? Uh, well, right now, because we're really promoting video podcast, it's video podcast, video marketing. Uh, hashtag vid vlog, yeah, hashtag video, video, video hashtag video production. Marketing. Yeah. yeah, so you're and following the, all of them. Yeah, and then, and then, some, and then sometimes and locations as well, like location oh. specific as well, like Maybe there's a, a, a um, certain city or region or something like hashtag that. Hashtag DFW, and, and, hashtag right. Uptown Dallas. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of see what's, you know, what may be going on in those. And, and a lot of times it gives us uh, insight into things that other video marketing and, and digital marketing companies are doing as well. And sure. some, sometimes yeah. we even get ideas, you know, and things. Absolutely, some of those. why not? Yeah, yeah. so. And just thinking about the local areas too, I'm thinking about Lindy Chapman, who's a friend of both of ours. Yeah. She's a relocation expert and she always talks about using LinkedIn as a way to get into a new area. I moved to Dallas a year ago today <laughs> and I was connecting with people in the Dallas-Fort Worth sure. area for a year and a half before I ever moved. Yeah. I didn't even know I was going to move here. I moved here because I connected with those people <laughs> right. and I had to be with them. But I could have been intentional about it, and now I am. Sure. Now that I live here, I'm looking for, you know, who's in Dallas, who's an entrepreneur, who's in this community, mm -hmm. who uses these hashtags, who's around here. Yeah. And I connect with those people. Yeah. So if somebody was looking to do a new job in a new place, they could follow the hashtags of that city, follow the Chamber of Commerce in that city, follow the Small Business Bureau or mm -hmm. Association, mm -hmm. and follow local business leaders in that area be part of the conversation just by adding comments. Yeah. Relevant comments, here's what my experience is that adds value to the conversation. Yeah, awesome. Well, there is so much more to talk about. Oh, I, I, I could sit here all day, but... We'll have to order some food. Right. Um, <laughs> Where do so, you like to have pizza, Mark? <laughs> so you have to promise me that you'll come back another time. I will. And, I'm going and, to Africa, and then uh, when I come back, okay. uh, I'm going to the Mavericks, and then I'll come here the next day. Okay, so we'll yeah. continue our conversation on yeah. another episode, so you, get, you know, can have a second A dip. double dose but, of me. Right. <laughs> you could double dip. <laughs> Double dip your chip. <laughs> <laughs> Never a bad thing. Well, thank you so right. much, Lila. Thank you I really, so much for having me. Really appreciate you being here. And I know, yeah. I know you're busy, so thanks for taking the time out to, totally to my sit pleasure. and share, share what you have with our audience. I know it's of great value. Thank so, you. Right. I'm looking forward to hearing from everybody what they, what they took away from yeah. it or what their questions are. So for our next sit down together, awesome. we'll, we'll answer questions, um, go into some more detail about anything anybody has okay. to ask. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And thank, thank you. you for joining us on this week's episode of Digital Marketing Today. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, actually, because I am going on a trip as well. Yeah. So it coming may be, with me to Africa. Uh, no. Well, <laughs> I'd rather be going where I'm going. I'll, I do want to go to Africa. Really? But, where are you going? I'm uh, going on a uh, two-week backpacking trek in Cim outside of Cimarron, New Mexico with my what? son and some other people from our scout troop. Wow. So full, Obviously, you'll get video. Yeah, a full 10 days on the trail yeah. uh, backpacking in the If in, I don't see like some country, highly so. produced video documentary of right. this i'm gonna be really disappointed that you like could I, have made this about your personal brand i'm just right. kidding have I a good will, time with your son i will it's all I will. about that and i'll try not to time. i'll try not to disappoint you yeah on, on the, you on never the, do on the video you never do. all right thank you all right we'll see you next time see on ya. digital marketing today